uh, this topic also is quite new for me, but we know we always uh, uh, know about the civil society. Okay? But do we know much about the uncivil society? Okay? Does this term uncivil society is widely used, not only among, among the common people, but also uh, in, in academic, okay? especially in the uh, social science, particularly in the political science? No, uh, uh, I've, I've just learned from the Alim Bubu that this is your fifth week, okay? which is mean that I assume that all of you have some uh, knowledge uh, or introduction about what is of civil society is. Okay? And uh, I'm sure that you learn much about the civil society. And uh, based on my uh, assumptions, so because this is the fourth semester students in the, the, at the degree level, uh, so I just can assume that uh, my, my uh, lecture here is about the most of the, at the preliminary uh, or introduction about the what, what is the uncivil society is. So I, I, I want to start with the uh, quotation from the, one of the Indonesian scholars. Okay? who particularly uh, doing research about the uncivil society in Indonesia in, in, in the post new order. Uh, he said, uh, she said that in the wake of the democratic opening, not only pro-democratic civil society organization have mushroom in the country. She actually referring to the Indonesia context, eh? but uncivil society groups have uh, commonly increasingly to the fore as well. Maybe some of you have, uh, uh, imagination or maybe something come to your minds, what kind of group that she is referring to? Eh? What kind of the uncivil society groups? Uh, we come to, back, uh, to that uh, more specifically later, eh? but I just want to remind you uh, about the, the, the bigger picture eh? about the civil society itself to make uh, easier for us to put where exactly eh, this civil, uncivil society uh, belongs to between these uh, four categories, eh? between the state, uh, civil society, the family, and the market. Eh? Normally, uh, uh, many definitions and uh, civil society itself is a very contested uh, concept. Eh? Uh, and many definitions uh, from uh, different scholars, from various perspectives, etc., from various uh, school of thought. And etc. But uh, the easiest way to to uh, define what civil society is is a is a space for uh, between the state and the in the, the family okay? because the state the highest the highest form of uh, in the structure of of the nation states and the, the family is is the uh, the lowest. But there is a space between that. Which is we call a civil society, civil society, and what make it different with the market is because it's non-profit. Yeah? That's the is that is the one way to define it. Yeah? But of course, uh, maybe uh, uh, you got the different definition from the previous class or from your reading, your own reading. But that's the way I understand it. Yeah? And then, uh, what makes different civil society? With the market because civil society is non 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 uh, non profit uh, orientations. Yeah? Uh, what that makes it different with the market, and of, uh, obviously uh, they are not part of the states. But actually, uh, in many cases, yeah? especially in Asia or Southeast Asia, uh, the relation between the civil society and the states is quite very close. Yeah? That's why. Uh, there is a term that we call as a gongo, eh? government NGO, eh? government non-government organizations. So NGO is the actor of the civil society that uh, sometimes we, uh, when we think about the civil society, then we think about the NGOs. Eh? Uh, but of course, uh, the civil society is more broader than NGO itself. NGO is a uh, actors. But why then, uh, it's very important to talk about the actors eh? because 
uh, if you talk about the actors, then we can analyze their behavior, uh, their orientations, their ideology, etc. cetera. Yeah. So uh, in this uh, lecture as well, uh, I, uh, uh, when, I talk, when I talk about social society, uh, I cannot uh, separate with the actors itself, which is NGO. Eh? And in Indonesia, we call it sometimes ORMAS, sometimes LSM. With, uh, I, I think it's Indonesian context, we have a different definition between LSM and ORMAS. Right? Like uh, NU, uh, Muhammadiyah, uh, and many other re biggest, bigger religious, uh, big religious organization is uh, ORMAS. Yeah? But sometimes like LSM, like LPTGIS, uh, what else? Uh, ISAI and many other uh, NGOs or LSM that, that different with ORMAS. But in the different contexts, uh, in the different countries, sometimes they don't have that differentiation. Yeah? They call it as uh, NGOs. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, just want to refresh or remind you about the, what civil society is. Yeah? Uh, actually, you can interrupt yeah? if you have any questions or some things you want to ask, just, uh, just uh, go ahead. Yeah? A civil society is a neutral zone in which various virtues compete was taken as a starting point. And we have to remember that many, other, many of the de definitions and reference that we always refer when we talk about the, or when we doing research about civil society is always uh, have a uh, Berkiblat, eh? Berkiblat uh, to the Western scholars or Western thinkings. Eh? Uh, that the idea of civil society uh, are always close related or connected with the idea of the liberal democracy. Eh? And John Rawls' notion about the civil society is no difference. Eh? Civil society as a neutral zone in which various virtues compete was taken as a starting point. And civil society should be defined as a value free, eh? not in many cases in Asia. I give you one example in Malaysia, in Bersih. Uh, for those who are not aware of what Bersih was, Bersih was the biggest uh, social movement or uh, driven by the NGOs in, in Malaysia before 2018. Uh, their main demands was uh, for the fair and free elections eh? because uh, in Malaysia, the previous government have been uh, in power for more than 60 years. Yeah? Uh, and because of the, they see that these NGOs uh, consider that the regime uh, was uh, using all of their force yeah? to do a fraud in the election, etc. That's why they need, Malaysia need the fair and free elections. And per se, was in the forefront yeah, to highlight the issues. And in, when uh, this movement uh, uh, vetting the demand, demands or menuntut, yeah, they always close, uh, closely work with the opposition parties, yeah, opposition parties. And which is mean that they are not value free actually. Okay? And I can see, uh, we actually we can see that in many cases, like in India, for example, okay? many NGOs that uh, what we call is the uncivil societies, groups that are doing lynchings to the minority Muslims, actually uh, closely related to with the BGP party also, yeah? the, the ruling party. That, uh, so uh, they are not value free actually. So uh, let's go back to the John Rawls uh, definition. Civil society should be defined as a value-free, neutral sphere per se, whose content and direction are determined by the values, norms, and ideology of the actor or group of actors who gain supremacy over despair. Uh, of course, uh, very clear that, uh, of course, John Rawls uh, are well known be uh, because of the its theory of justice. Yeah? And many other, other definitions and I think in the Indonesian context, uh, especially for those who have uh, activist background uh, in LSM, LSM or NGOs in Indonesia, we are more familiar with Antonio, Antonio Gramsci notion about the civil society, which is a public space separate from state and market in which citizens from their political 
uh, opinions and make the decisions. This contested space is the main arena for creating legitimacy and is marked by conflicting interests and power struggles. You know that, uh, of course, even though that the grants key uh, well known amongst the Marxists as the neo-Marxist thinkers, but of course they also uh, came from the tradition of the Marxist itself. Yeah? Uh, that the power struggle is the, the main key uh, for this uh, civil society divined by the Antony Gramsci. And therefore civil society is never harmonious and ho homogeneous entity, but an arena of ongoing conflict. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, from the Max, Marxist uh, thinking, so Marxist, Marxist tradition, the conflict is the its main uh, keywords. Yeah? Contesting interests, power struggle, competition, and ideological classes, which is mean that there are many uh, contested ideas yeah? in the democratic space. Yeah? I think it's uh, in Indonesian case, we can see clearly when the under the, the new order under the Suharto regime, the time uh, we we didn't have that many uh, competition among the ideologies yeah, because of the domination of the the ruling at the time. Even though that uh, since eight, the late eighties, yeah, many uh, many resistance. Yeah, from the uh, grassroots oppositions that uh, finally can topple down the Soharto regime in 1998. Okay. So uh, the thing is, uh, based on that definitions, yeah, actually many other definitions, and I'm sure that you already have knowledge about the, what is a civil society is. Now the thing is, we back to our main, uh, our main topic here. So we consider a civil society as a part of a wider category of civil society or as conceptually, conceptually distinct as a evil twin. Yeah? Because uh, as you know that uh, the main academic argument in relation to a civil society uh, turns out and whether the use of the concept is, is, uh, uh, should be included or excluded from the de definition of civil society. Yeah? Uh, for example, is uh, John Kane yeah, has argued that all un non forms of civil society are plagued by indigenous source of incivility. Yeah? Uh, civil society, uh, based on his uh, notion and definition, differentiated by a tipping point, this of the violence. So, uh, the, the what what makes uncivil society different from the civil society? is a method yeah, uh, to pursue their agenda yeah, where the violence is their main, uh, main uh, repertoire or main, uh, main uh, method yeah, to pursue their agenda or goals. And also uh, for those who study about the, the uh, consolidation of democracy, uh, I think we'll encounter with the with the Philip Smith notions eh, that define uh, uncivil society uh, is not part of the civil society eh? because you know uh, if you look at the term itself, eh, civil, uh, that's a, it has a very positive uh, tone. Eh? It's uh, different with the uncivil. Eh? Uh, you know, in Indonesia, we call it masyarakat civil, masyarakat civil. Eh? But in the Indonesian context, uh, based on the, our historical, long historical background with the military and etc., sometimes uh, civil is always contradictory with the military. You know, uh, masyarakat civil, atau, uh, which is in English, we call it civilian. Eh? Uh, fish a fish with the military, but we also have a civil society, yeah, masyarakat civil, and in other contexts, in the other country that has no tradition with the military, it has different meaning. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 how we use the term itself, masyarakat civil, 
or uncivil society, sometimes it depends on the context. Uh, so Philip Smitter excluded the uncivil from the civil society. But other scholars, they always uh, uh, also have uh, uh, include the uncivil society inside the civil society. It's part of the civil society. So this is always debated in the in the in the uh, scholarly works. Eh? Okay. Wait. Do you have a? Uh, uh, can I get the, any response from you to answer this question? How do you see that? How how you uh, do you have any idea how to answer this question? So we consider a civil society as a part of wider category of civil society or as a concept for this thing uh, as its evil evil twin. <laughs> you know, I think this question is uh, I post this question too early because I didn't uh, give a. A definition or characteristic about uh, uncivil society itself, but maybe you can have, uh, you know, presumptions no? or imagination about what is uncivil society. Uh, okay, before I, uh, I go to the next slide and next explanations, maybe some of you want to contribute, eh? contribute or just want to make this. Uh, a lecture is more interactive. Eh? Anyone uh, have any idea, want to answer this question? <laughs> okay, or maybe uh, uh, have you encountered or have you heard or have you any knowledge about the, uh, what uncivil society is? Before you enter this class, maybe you have read some material. Of course, I, I give, uh, I forward the, the three articles, a very short article for you to read eh, before you enter this class. The objective is to make, you know, you got, the, you got the idea before you enter this class. But before that, have you heard about the uncivil society? This is the common, common uh, terms is used uh, Within academic or and the public domain in Indonesia, uh, what do you think? Any of you want to try to answer that question? Oh, because because in Malaysia we don't have any research about the uncivil society. The term is uh, uh, in the Malaysian political context. It's quite new. But actually, like in Indonesia, uh, the the research has been, has been done actually about the uncivil society. Uh, one of them is uh, from Bob Hadi Niwanata. Hmm? The articles that as, that I ask you to read in one another 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 research done by the uh, Ferenga Betinga eh, about the uncivil society in Indonesia. But that research has been done into 2009, uh, I mean that published in 2009 and the 2000 uh, before, even before, but even before that. Yeah? So, but actually, if you if you follow the development of Indonesian politics, yeah, what happened with the the uh, disbanded of the Hizbut Tahir yeah, uh, and FB, F, FBI yeah, last year, so. Do you think that's part of the uncivil society? Uh, have you encountered in your daily life eh? with this kind of group of uncivil society? In Indonesia, actually many. Eh? Uh, anyone can help me just uh, answering that questions? Eh? Uh, what kind of groups we are talking about? In Indonesia context, especially. Can I answer? Ahmad Mufli. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I think that the uh, civil society. Uh, I agree with 
this uh, sentence as conceptually distinct and it's evil twin because I believe that the, if there is a civil society so there is an uncivil society I mean it's a uh, differentiate between those two, two things to a benchmark for like uh, so if we say that there is a state that civil society it means that there is also another state that become uncivil society so it's a benchmark between one state and another state to become a civil society so. okay thanks uh, for your response uh, Ahmad Mufli yeah uh, any other want to uh, argue that or or maybe add something uh, to that maybe based on your my another question is uh, uh, I did not mention any specific group. Eh? Yes, I mentioned about the different what different between ORMAS and LSM in the Indonesian context. I mentioned about the HTI and FP, FPE. Uh, actually, many other uh, uncivil society groups that exist in Indonesia until today. Uh, in Yogyakarta, specifically, especially, uh, you can uh, name few. Eh? Some of them, uh, some of this group is based in Yogyakarta. Let's say, uh, any any one can uh, add the information about about actually what we are talking about. Eh? What what kind of group we are talking about? <laughs> any anyone? No, otherwise I just continue, but. Uh, yeah, why is it important to asking this question whether should we consider a civil society as part of the world, civil society or not? Yes, yes. yes. I heard uh, someone who wants to talk. No one? Karisa, no. Okay, why is, our, uh, why is it important to asking such a question? Because uh, if you read the article from Bob Hadi Winata, uh, it said that we always uh, consider the civil society is a part of the democratizations. Yeah? That democratization only possible with the uh, contribution of the civil society. Yeah? And most of the time, this, this is a true. If you look at the, if you read the, some scholarly work, mostly like Huntington, uh, Larry Diamond, etc. Uh, they always emphasize the role of civil society. But at the same time, some of them actually that, uh, do not highlight eh, the negative effect the civil society can bring to the, to the democracy. So, and I think why then uh, this is important to asking uh, such questions. Eh? We always uh, make the civil society is a sacred, uh, sacred institutions eh, that give a huge contribution to the democratizations, which is make that uh, democracy is not possible without is not possible without their contributions. But actually, uh, knowing about uncivil society, we are we can also say that. Uh, different kind of the dark side of the civil society also can can be revealed. Many uh, civil society organization as well uh, can we consider as a uh, uncivil based on their method, based on their agenda, based on their ideology. Yeah? I mentioned about the HTE, uh, FPI, FPE. Of course, they are like HTE. Of course, of course, they are against the democracy eh? because uh, because uh, their their main goal is to to uh, to create the sharia uh, government eh? what, what what's the the correct terms for that but you know you know what i mean eh? uh, and they are considered as a civil society eh? if you believe that 
uh, civil society as a part of the civil society, then the groups like HTI, FPE, uh, Satgas PDIP, uh, what else? Pemuda Pancasila, uh, that makes the face of democracy in Indonesia is worse. But actually, they are part of the civil society. Uh, so, another uh, schools or another school of thought thinks that because they are uncivil, they cannot become a civil society because the term civil itself have a, you know, have a positive meaning. You know, the uncivil is, is always negative. So, so uh, the debates uh, around that is still ongoing, yeah? whether we can consider the uncivil society as part of civil society or not, right? But uh, let's look specifically, now, now we are going to specific on the uncivil society itself. Yeah? If you read the articles that I asked you to read, uh, this, this is only excerpt from that, some of the article. Uh, yeah? uh, Kovi Annan is a former, former uh, PBB uh, UN uh, General Secretary. Uh, in one of his speech, yeah, mentioned about the uncivil society means those who use the benefit of globalization to traffic in illegal drugs, slander money, yeah? uh, engage in terrorism and traffic in human beings. Uh, I don't know, in your previous class, talking about the civil society and actors, NGOs, uh, did uh, groups like terrorist group, mafia, uh, illegal drugs, dealers, uh, which is the big organizations, yeah? Uh, human tra human traffickers. Can we consider them as a as a civil society organizations? Hmm? Yeah. Some some says that like terrorist organization like Al Qaeda. Uh, they are trans they are transnational civil society organizations. <clears throat> so uh, I think that's part of the debate and whether we can include this kind of groups to the civil society or not. Right? So based on the Kofi Annan's uh, definitions, yeah, and civil society as the driver of conflict, yeah, those who promote exclusionary policies or encourage people to resort uh, to violence. And one of the main characteristics of civil society that differentiate them with the civil society groups, with the other civil society groups is uh, violence. Yeah? And, and uh, another scholars uh, define a catch uh, all term for a wide range of disruptive, unwelcome, and threatening elements deemed to have emerged in the space between the individual and the state. Yeah? Uh, what then are their elements? Yeah? For another definitions and how to define or to identify what. Uh, what kind of group that we, we, sh we should include into the uncivil society group, uh, you can uh, read the, the, some of the, the article that I have forward uh, to you, right? So uh, what is the elements? Of course, this four is only the most obvious one. Eh? You can add some other elements yeah, uh, to this. Yeah? Maybe in Indonesian context, we, we, I was uh, familiar with the term of the preman. Uh, one of the scholars uh, who done research about the uh, uncivil society groups in Indonesia, uh, Ian Wilson, yeah? uh, published a book that uh, the title is a politic jatah preman. And so the premanisme politik, uh, politik preman is a very, uh, very related to the Indonesian political context. So some of them are ultranationalist groups. So you can find this kind of group, not only in Indonesia, but also in another country as well. Extreme religious groups. I mentioned the, about the example in, in, in India. Interestingly, when I mentioned about the, how we define a civil society based on the category defined by the Western scholars and the, uh, liberal democracy, etc. But many groups that exist in India, 
many social, civil society groups that exist in, in, in India, actually they are very different with the category uh, defined by the Western. Huh? Most of the civil society that exists in, in, in India based on the ultra nationalist groups or extreme religious groups. Huh? Uh, so then, so, uh, but they are part of the civil society, huh? but only different from the, the Western scholars' uh, definitions. Precocious right? uh, militias, militia yang bandel. Eh? Uh, uh, so we can find also uh, here in Indonesia, especially during the Estimo referendum in 1999, huh? many, many, uh, uh, many uh, pro-integration uh, militias huh? that tried to uh, hijack the referendum, eh? the result of the referendum, as we know that Estimo, uh, Timor Timor chose to uh, separate with Indonesia. Uh, then at the time, many pro integrasi militia exist and uh, the bloodshed uh, civil war took place in, and that, that was a very uh, sad story lah, in our countries. There also what happened in the, what happened in Poso, Ambon, etc. Eh? Laskar Jihad, eh? the, that's a, a extreme religious group and also militias. Eh? Another thing is a tough and tough and preman lah, eh, and mafia. So uh, uh, this visual actually can uh, give you some picture about the how the uncivil society can uh, tarnish the give a bad name to the civil society, eh, to civil society group or kepada ormas. Eh? We have the Pemuda Pancasila, FBR, eh? uh, Pemkot Bekasi. So I just give you a picture, the reality of what happened in, in, in Indonesia. I don't know whether some of you maybe have a uh, inclination eh? or, or maybe uh, ideological uh, preference to the certain groups that we can consider uncivil in this context, but you can argue eh? uh, at the lower right is a FBI uh, riots. So this is not new, and I'm sure that some of you are aware of these situations. Uh, so Ormas, we call it Ormas. Yeah? Uh, civil society organizations, yeah? different with the LSM or NGO. Uh, you can, you can uh, give a comment later yeah, about about the about the our political situations. So this very rampant after uh, reformasi, yeah, but uh, today also they have some uh, clashes between the ormas that took place in uh, several places, uh, several cities in Indonesia. So. Uh, just want to uh, emphasize again, eh, to re-emphasize the what makes uncivil society different uh, from civil society, eh, which is the use of violence. Uh, of course, this kind of group have their own argument why they choose that method. Eh? Let, uh, for example, why then FPE, FPE, Front Pembela Islam choose to uh, rape. Uh, nightclub, raid the tempat maksiat, eh? become a, a policy moral, eh? become a moral moral police. Why they choose to, to do that? Eh? Because, uh, the argument is because the state or uh, uh, state apparatus, eh? police uh, or law enforcement uh, cannot uh, handle the, the, the bad situations against the Islamic norms that rampant in the, our society. Yeah? They have that kind of arguments, uh, but the method is always questionable, yeah? why they use that kind of method. But even, even though they choose that the method, they have many followers. Yeah? And why is that? Yeah? And I, I think not only in Indonesia, 
even in the let's say the one of the research done in the Eastern Europe, they uh, Kasmut, eh? uh, one of the scholars uh, did the research in, in Eastern Europe. They he also found the same uh, same uh, situations eh? where this uncivil society groups use violence, but they get support from the grassroots communities. And, uh, and uh, other characteristic is uh, exclusivism, eh, particularly of ethnic or religious nat nature. Of course, like HTI, FPI, uh, maybe uh, Pemuda Pancasila or Satgas PDIP, uh, Gerakan Pemuda Akbar, dan sebagainya, eh, eh, etc. And fundamentalism. Okay. You, you, of course, you can always argue that uh, with this kind of characteristic, yeah? but in the in the bigger picture, this is what uh, they are, uh, the scholars always use uh, how to characterize the uncivil society group. An attempt to impose inflexible doctrines not only to those who willingly adhere to them, but on a wider group. Uh, you know, I think the main issue with our society is uh, the right of the minority. Sometimes they have to follow. Uh, the rule, or maybe the uh, follow the voice of the majority. Eh? Uh, I think the, that is the case. Eh? If if one particular group force the minority to accept eh, the practice of their religions or their ethnic or their or their specific uh, attribute, then then it become. And democratic yeah? civil society. We have the issue with the with the jilbab in Padang, yeah? pemasaan jilbab in Padang, etc. Yeah? Even though that we cannot uh, point a finger to the particularly particularly uncivil groups, but it shows how the uncivil society groups that brings the idea of fundamentalism, uh, exclusivism, got the support from the. Not only from the grassroots, sometimes it's by the politicians, eh? by the elites. So that's why we have the premanismo politic in our daily life uh, politics. Eh? And intolerance is still part of that. I'm sure that you understand. Not abiding by the rules, eh? how the method they use uh, doing uh, some you know, violence. Let's see how many slides that I have. Not much. Uh, I think we still have uh, half an hour uh, left before we uh, finish this class. Yeah, but of course, uh, we still have a time for the Q and A later. But as mentioned, you you, you are welcome to interrupt me if you uh, if if you have any question. So, uh, previous slide it shows you what is the characteristic of of uncivil society. Now we are more specifically uh, going to characteristic of the USO. USO is a uh, actors, eh? uncivil society organizations. Eh? USO is actors. So this is defined by the Verena Bettinger Lee, uh, who done the research about the uncivil society in, in Indonesia. And eh? not much different from the previous one, but it has uh, some addition on that. The use of force, violence, and fraud to acquire power of political influence. Not uh, the power of political influence, not exactly that you must sit in the public uh, administration's post. Yeah? You don't have to be a politician, you don't have to be a governor, or you don't have to be a president to, to have a political influence, like Habib, Habib Rizik. Yeah? Uh, I think uh, he, he got the power or political influence as well. Yeah? Uh, and of course, it represents the FPE. Sometimes people see that using the force of violence uh, to get that influence. And other thing is the pursuit of illiberal or anti-democratic or anti-democratic agendas. Yeah? Uh, I have a example that I will explain later about how about the civil society movement, like what happened in the Black Lives Matters. Yeah? That turned into riots, yeah? or what happened in the Myanmar, yeah? the anti-coup movement, yeah? 
civil disobedient movement eh? they they choose to to go into the violence but should we call them or should we consider them as a uncivil society itself so and there's a other example in Slovakia national movement eh? in 1992 they consider as a as a mainstream politics as a uncivil but they are the main force to topple down the uh, the uh, authoritarianism in in the uh, 90, 1989 so sometimes uh, it, it it depends on the specific context so the pursuit of illiberal or anti democracy agendas uh, do you think that uh, fpe fit into the criteria of the second point eh? uh, thus it has the anti-democratic agendas and you, you you can argue with that eh? and the third point is a uh, undemocratic internal structure of course uh, the organization itself uh, like Muhammadiyah and U, they have a uh, uh, pemilihan eh? or maybe the elections uh, but you can see many many uh, other organization not only in the CSO, not only on, on not only in the civil society organization but also in the political party itself sometimes like Gerindra they don't have uh, before the last elections yeah, Prabowo was still the the leaders yeah, not elected yeah, but appointed so uh, doesn't mean that it means that they don't have the internal structure uh, that have a democratic structure. Then under the point is a ideological foundation that is opposed to liberal democratic values. Uh, the, the lack of spirit of civility. Uh, some of them, some of this point is uh, very related. Uh, the absence of commitment to act within the concern of legal or pre-established pre rules. Uh, they sometimes undermine, sometimes undermine the rule of law. Uh, take the law at their own hands. Uh, uh, in Indonesian context, if you learn that most of these uh, uncivil society groups, actually some of them supported or initiated by the military or the police uh, force yeah? since the 1990, since the reformacy, when the, when the reputation of the military and uh, police, of police enforcement uh, very low, so uh, one way how to control the mass is to create okay, the civil society groups and support them and took the actions okay. uh, like because when the military or police have to face with the uh, demonstrations it will give them uh because they already have the bad reputations yeah, among the people among the masses but uh if you have a paramilitary group like pam swakarsa i don't know whether some of you uh have heard about that yeah? one of the organization we call is a pam swakarsa is a paramilitary group uh that their main task is to uh uh face to face with the protests in the in the during the reformasi in, in the Samangi incidents yeah, in the, uh, 1999 uh, and that kind of tactic still uh, applied today by if you if you look at the the uh, workers strike or workers demonstrations they are always faced by the preman itself yeah? they're not uh, threatened or not intimidated by the police or military but sometimes it's a preman organization or ormas yeah? many uh demonstrasi buruh yeah? many student demonstration is always faced always uh intimidated by the this preman auto atau ormas yeah? gerakan gerakan ormas uh, another point is racism intolerance uniformity and illegality or uh, criminal activities including you know uh, illegal drugs uh, traffickers yeah, dealers, uh, human traffickers, and etc. So, uh, if you want to know more about the about the Indonesian example, 
uh, Uncivil Society, you can uh, refer to this uh, book by Bernana Bettingeli, Uncivil Society and Political Change in Indonesia. But this study has been done uh, more decade ago. I think uh, we should look at the, the most update uh, research uh, because very interesting what happened in Indonesia now. We have many uh, many things eh, to consider, many things to look at uh, about the development of uncivil society movement in Indonesia. So, uh, categorization of uncivil society groups in Indonesia. Uh, some of this group, uh, uh, some of them still exist, but some of them already uh, disbanded after, or maybe just cease to be exist. Eh? I know some of you maybe just born in the 2000, 2000 and and some of uh, some of this group are uh, still 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 there, still active, and some of them like pro integration militia in Istimo. I mentioned before, uh, it's not active anymore. Huh? Uh, was disbanded when the Istimos get independent from Indonesia. Uh, I, I also not really familiar with what is Ratih Kamra, but Pansuakarsa and Pemuda Pancasila, Pemuda Pancawarga, uh, how she categorized eh, uncivil society. First, that uh, the examples in the left side eh, of the of the seats, I see that this uh, this groups have. Uh, uh, military military connections eh, or proxies of military, which is mean that state military sponsored paramilitaries youth group, eh, semi state uh, uncivil society organization set up or, or, or co opted by the states. Now, uh, some uh, argue that FPI in the first place when it uh, initiated by the uh, sponsored by by the military as well, but of course we have, have to find a, a more reliable uh, documented research on that. But it's a very knowledge common knowledge that FPE uh, in the first place was sponsored or or uh, supported by the uh, police or military. But if you look at the this categorization by Bernard uh, Nabetinga. Uh, it's only categorized FPA as antagonistic to the liberal, liberal states, huh? which means that they have agenda, illiberal agenda. And yeah, Pecalangan in Bali, yeah, Ansor, Bansar, I'm sure that some of you, I don't know whether Muhammadiyah have the same, uh, same Ormas that especially, uh, you know, have a, like Bansar in, in, in NU. Maybe you can you can share if you know and yeah, let me know. Satgas PDIP, uh, PDIP uh, FBR Forum Betawi Rempu, Forum Betawi Rempu. That's uh, infamously uh, always fight in the street yeah, to to you know to get the political racketing. That means that mendapatkan jatah. Yeah, uh, the the common story uh, from this uncivil ormas is. They always uh, take a don the donation, but by force. Yeah? Misalnya, contohnya uh, menjelang Idul Fitri, misalnya, yeah? orang mas tertentu meminta kepada pengusaha untuk memberikan sumbangan. Yeah? So that's kind of practice that they always uh, do. Yeah? Uh, so Jemaah Islamia. Uh, so it's, it's not active anymore things yeah? outside the state and it, its rules. So from this categorization, we can see that the variations of the uncivil society, how uh, they came into exist, uh, whether it's supported by the military or governments, or whether they are purely independent. But this is only in the Indonesian context. Yeah? But our subject today is about the uncivil society organization as a concept, as a whole. You can apply in in another part of a country as well, yeah? another part of the world. Now, 
this is uh, what I mentioned before, yeah? the, based on the research done by the Kasmud uh, on the uncivil society movement in the Eastern Europe, mentioned that civil, civil uh, movement are not by definition good for democracy or democratization. So it has the same tone with uh, Bob Hadi Minata, who tried to uh, mendekrali, mendesakralisasikan civil society. Because we always see that civil society is good for democracy, eh? but uh, they try to take us back and think that actually civil society also has a dark side uh, that can also uh, contribute to the backsliding of the democracy, eh? contribute to the, the creation of the uh, autocratizations. Eh? I give you one example of what happened in the in the Thailand uh, under during the Sinawatra uh, government, uh, Philippines during Estrada, and also Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. One of the article from the Tamasat uh, Journal things I read about the uh, the the authors use the terms uh, civil society coups, yeah, civil society coups. So how the civil society uh, uh, create or initiate the movement to, top, to topple, topple down the elected democratic uh, government or, or leaders, yeah? which is mean that uh, yes, civil society for, for the most of the time uh, in, the, in the whole world have a bigger contribution, have a big contribution to democratization. But if you if you look at the specific case like what happened in the Thailand, uh, uh, Philippines, and the Venezuela, uh, civil society initiated the civil society coup, ni coup d'état. Uh, the elected government. So this is, uh, I think, related to what is the Kashmu try to say that civil movement and not by definition good for democracy or democratization, and uncivil, uncivil movement are by definition bad for democracy or democratization. So uh, we uh, it try to uh, contest the ideas, uh, contesting the ideas that civil society is always uh, good for democratizations. So um, I'm I'm sure that I, I still. I also still learning eh, to look at the several cases that what, what happened in, in, in other countries. Uh, but in Indonesia, I'm sure uh, we have many uh, civil movement that bad for our democracy. Eh? Of course, in Indonesia, now we talk about the elite elite corporations. Eh? We are nearly no have oppositions. Eh? Uh, in Indonesian current politics, we talk about the uh, Autocracy, or we talk about the you know oligarchy. That is our main uh, challenge to the democratizations eh? that make uh, our demo democratic democratization process uh, backslide. Eh? But of course, at the same time, we also have some civil movement that can uh, also contribute eh, to the to the. Uh, backsliding of the democratizations. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, my last slide, actually. But I just want to give you uh, some visual. Of course, I don't have to give the caption to this picture. Yeah. I don't want to exactly only highlight about the, what FPE had been done. Uh, but uh, it was a, an obvious example that I was, uh, people I was uh, refer this group as an uncivil because the method and the, their main agendas for Islamic and anti-democratic, etc. But also I have another pictures like Black Lives Matters. Uh, what makes these uh, situations or this movement uh, difference? 
can we also say that Black Lives Matter because they use the violence uh, part of the uncivil society? If you ask the conservative in the US, they will agree with that. that they will say that, yes, this Black Lives Matter is uncivil because uh, they are undermine the law and order. Uh, but can we actually uh, consider them as the uncivil? Uh, bear in mind that in the contest, contentious politics, eh, uh, the violence sometimes is one only one of the method, eh? only one of the method to you know to to get your demands or get your voice heard by the authorities, lah. Eh? Uh, anyone can uh, give me food for thought about this uh, two different events. What makes FPE different with uh, Black Lives Matters? Are you, or maybe you not agree with, uh, because at the at the one point, the one, one hand, we must, uh, we must agree that our poli uh, uh, law enforcement police, sometimes they are not able to uh, overcome some of the issues that uh, yang meresahkan di masyarakat. Eh? That's why FPI then become for some people because uh, they are brave eh, to take an action. Uh, yeah. But uh, of course, we also cannot agree that if FPI, it's uh, because they took because they take the law at their own hands, uh, at that point, we cannot agree that uh, uh, they are uh, make situation is better. Eh? Because the method that they use, uh, obviously undemocratic. So I have about the 15 minutes, maybe I can finish earlier about that. Uh, I don't have any slide, I don't have any uh, lecture, I don't have any explanation to give. But just want to 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 know what is your response? Uh, can we uh, consider Black Lives Matters who who do the riot uh, as an uncivil society movement as well, or uncivil society uh, yeah movements? Because it's not an organization actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you're following uh, the development of the Black Lives Matter. Uh, in the US last year. But if we talk about the civil society, I think it's a very interesting time to learn what happened in other country. Eh? First in Hong Kong, and now we have the bubble, bubble tea uh, coalitions. Eh? Have you heard about the bubble tea coalitions? What happened in the Thailand, uh, Taiwan, uh, in, in currently in Myanmar? Uh, the anti-monarchy movement in Thailand, yeah. anti-kudeta movement in, in the in Myanmar, etc. Black Lives Matters before that, the year before, a year before. Uh, I don't know. Based on my explanation, I know that I have uh, many limitations, uh, mostly because of a uh, language. Maybe eh? uh, I know that this, uh, uh, I hope lah. I hope you can you can get what's the or or at least the, our main objective to introduce what is the uncivil society is uh, achieve. Yeah? I hope I can uh, make myself clear about the about the what the idea of uncivil society. Uh, and at least I of course I I also encourage you to 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 read more yeah, about about this topic. Uh, okay, many. I have many questions that still unanswered. Yeah? Uh, we still have a time. You are welcome to give a response or answer. Uh, now it's time to discuss. Uh, you know, I give to Alim Bubu maybe. Okay. Um, so everyone, if you have a questions, just uh, talk clearly uh, to Fabri. So he will. Uh, 
you will enjoy and really fun if you have a talk about Black Lives Matter. Is there any questions, guys? I have a sponsor. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's about this Black Lives Matter and FPI problems. I think it's quite different, sir, because uh, FPI is, uh, I can say, angry because it's only uh, fight for the Muslims things. Uh, we know that Indonesia have uh, the state of Indonesia have freedom for all religion, but FPI only uh, uh, fight for Muslims. It's different with this Black Lives Matter. He sounds for the black people. Then we know that the U.S. is always a racism for its state. Uh, you got my point, sir? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But you, you, you finished there or you still have anything else to say? Uh, I'm finished, sir. Maybe that's my response. Okay, thanks. Uh, yes, uh, if I can conclude based on your explanation is that uh, what makes these two movements is different because of their agenda and their goals, why they are uh, choosing a violent as a def the form of their struggles. Uh, yeah, of course, Black Life, Black Life Matters is, is came, the movement came from the, from the minority uh, groups in society and their, their demand is the, you know, uh, the equal treatment eh? from the law enforcement, uh, no profiling, uh, uh, actually the human right issue, lah, human right issue, that all people must be treated uh, as the same above the uh, above, uh, by the law. But what happened was that you know the how uh, the society. Uh, in the in the country, mostly uh, black uh, American people, uh, they are they are they feel that they are feel that they are being treated uh, unfairly. Lah. So the human right issues that there is, it's it's a part of the democratization democratization issues, different with the FPE. Right? Uh, what makes these two movements different is because they are uh, agenda and ideology no? and the, the demand itself. Eh? Because we can consider that uh, FPE from the, you can argue with this, but from the majority groups, eh? because they are majority, then they are uh, things that they can take uh, law at their own hand. Okay, do you have any other? Uh... Sir, sir uh, someone's right on chat because he has a problem in connections. Um, it's from Muhammad Saiful Raidwan or James. He has a question, how to encourage civil society to get involved in mitigation effects of climate change in a developing country? Civil society to involve in mitigation in climate change. Yeah, mitigation effect. How to encourage civil society? You know, the thing is uh, very interesting uh, this question. Even though that this is uh, out of the subject we are today, uh, we talk about the actors, NGOs, and mostly NGOs. Uh, every NGOs they have limitations. They have their own issue that they want to take. Let's say that if NGO who who focus on the human rights. Uh, some they they cannot they don't talk about the climate change. We have a Walhi, we have the Greenpeace, and maybe another uh, NGOs that uh, that works with the environmental issues. You can only rely on these NGOs. Uh, the same times, uh, these NGOs who work with the en environmental issues, they will not touch the issue of the human rights or issue of uh, 
human trafficking. So that's the thing with the NGOs. Uh, maybe next week, uh, my subjects on the uh, democracy promotions, uh, I will explain, but how? Because this every NGOs, sometimes they get the source of the funding from the foreign, uh, foreign funding, yeah, foreign uh, promoter democracy. And they have certain uh, agreement or program that they have to pursue. And then and they are also accountable for the, the money that they get. Yeah? Uh, I think it's it, it that's why why Greenpeace, uh, while he they cannot uh talk about the human rights issues and why let's say about uh uh NGOs like LBHI, LBH, they will talk not talk about the climate change. So climate change is only main issues in the our global context. There are many other issues, eh? refugee issues, human trafficking, uh, what else? Many, many issues. And it, every issues, it always has the NGOs or civil society actors who are involved and focus on that. So your question is how to uh, encourage uh, civil society to, to well, something related to the uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the limitation of the NGO itself. Eh? You can uh, you can raise this issue and work with the Walhi, Greenpeace, and other environmental NGOs, but you cannot work together with other NGOs. Eh? Uh, so that's the thing. I will I will try to explain uh, that later next week, yeah? because it's very related to how or where these NGOs get their money to operate. Yeah? So because because of many criticize criti criticisms to the civil society organizations, yeah? and I just try to look at. Uh, CSO or civil society organization from different perspective, not many people outside there really knows yeah? because we always see that LSM uh, NGOs is very good because they are, uh, you know, highlight very important issues. But actually, if you look deep into that, or maybe you part of that, you will see that uh, many and uh, Negative issue always highlighted lah by other 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 scholars as well about the the practice of the NGO itself. I will try to reveal some of them in the next next week uh, lecture. Okay, uh, Alim Bubu. Okay, uh, shall we like uh, accept one more question, sir? Or uh, no, it's up to what? you if if okay. you still have that. It, it's always questions? like this. I mean that okay. it's always like this in the class. Uh, because uh, in uh, for for the whole my academic career, I always teach uh, Malaysian students, mm. and I, I have a I have a background when I did my degree in uh, in Indonesia, then I pursue my postgraduate in Malaysia. I can compare the way a uh, student in the class, you know, when I was uh, when my time when I was a student, I can see that my uh, my classmates very active, you know, but in Malaysia, yeah, just like now. So I, I don't know what what happened. <laughs> I, because I expect that we we have more, you know, uh, more interactive discussion, etc. But maybe because of we 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 have our online, you know, very difficult to engage all of the people <laughs> into okay. the discussion. Um. Actually, like it's it's really interesting you talk about uncivil society, sir. Um, if it's possible, is it possible if I have a question a little bit? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, you talk about uh, debate, uh, the debate, uh, how actually we define civil society. Because uh, in the past three weeks, I quite read a lot about uh, civil society itself, which is actually uh, how the Western perspective mentioned um, civil society is more how uh, kind of a uh, invisible hand or a power 
who can uh, actually influence uh, the governments or what actually the power in that in one country. And it is really interesting when you talk about uncivil society, there are plenty example for, from Indonesia that you mentioned like HTI, FAI, and so on. And surpri surprisingly, I thought this kind of group is part of civil society itself because they try to threat the government, give a criticize and everything, which is uh, yeah, for democratic countries quite clear that uh, kind of group uh, would be participated. I mean, participations kind of, uh, as oppositions from the government. I'm not sure, but uh, interests of each group has a different, as you mentioned. Like when you talk about climate change group, maybe they, they won't care about other uh, interests. Yeah, that's right. Uh, my question is, do you think that, um, uh, do you think that the uncircle society um, and, and civil society uh, groups still uh, possible into kind of a democracy movements. Uh, for example, we see, uh, for example, the case in Indonesia, when Jokowi tried, uh, tried to stop the FAE, uh, the democratics of Indonesia's quite down. There's uh, the, the data showed that. What do you think, sir? I mean, I mean I'm quite uh, about how to define this actually. Because yeah. Still... yeah, I remember when when the uh, FPE disbanded. Uh, yeah, FPE people talk about the 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 legal standing, okay? yeah. the legal standing that is not constitutional, etc. But uh, yeah, as a democratic society, as democratic countries, uh, if you if you still consider the Indonesia as democratic democratic country, it must have. It must uh, accommodate all of the uh, uh, several all of the different uh, groups. I'm not saying that democratic is the is the perfect, you know, which just mean that yeah. it's still at, at, we can learn from the history how the Nazi came into power, you know, because it gave the room for the democracy. But uh, uh, yeah, the the Inti daripada demokrasi itu sendiri, the, uh, the core of the democracy itself is give uh, any uh, ideology or groups to uh, chance or opportunity to, to flourish. But, but the problem in Indonesia, I think, is uh, how the receptive, the receptive of the Indonesian people to to uh, what kind of group that they want to support. Huh? And in FPE case, because the lack of uh, ability from the law enforcement to take actions uh, from what FPE supporters call as a maxiat or etc. But I don't know how to answer that. But uh yes fpa can be disbanded but the ideology can still uh, remain uh, no way you can disband fpa and then you know look how they are respond to that eh? fpa they're not they not uh tidak melakukan satu reaksi yang berlebihan dia terima mereka terima kan because they know that you know fpa is only uh, the name of the organizations but the ideology can still uh can still uh, flourish huh? uh, but um, i'm sorry because uh, if i if i don't answer you uh, correctly uh it's okay sir like uh, <laughs> yes there's not there's actually correct because still debatable yeah as you mentioned yes it's like i'm just really curious about it too uh yeah the times is your uh, any questions more guys or I don't know okay. if you have any other class after this or yeah, yeah do you have a, the time is is uh, over actually <laughs> do you have class Elsa oh, yes. okay okay they have class sir. um uh, is it possible to ask for your PowerPoint, sir? because I want to yes. upload it for the student on yeah, e I, will, I will email you yeah sure uh I think 
a closing statement you have probably like for today and let's continue uh, yes i just hope that if you are really interesting with the political science in the civil society uh you can uh read more about about the uncivil society because i'm sure that this concept is quite new and sometimes marginalized by the by the uh, mainstream uh discourse on the civil society and we actually rarely or uh, not really look into the uncivil uh, elements in our society so that's the thing for me myself is it's a quite new that's why i'm still learning uh, i hope the next uh, class i will talk about the democracy promotions it's related to the foreign funding funding actually okay? and i will uh, i would like to share maybe uh, I, i share some articles for you to read and i really expect that we can have a more lively discussion for the next week yeah? because maybe some of you are already active or maybe have uh, 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 an idea or cita-cita to become uh, ngo activist active the lsm because quite a good career you know uh, uh, for for political science students yeah? because you channeling your interest with the ngos and you got many opportunities yeah? for for many lah, for, for pursue your your interest okay that's that's the thing thank you for giving attention i hope and i'm sorry if 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 i uh if i kind of answer all the of the questions and my maybe my explanation is not really clear uh as you know that my my english is not really good so but uh, i really hope that you can uh, further your readings uh on this topic okay thank you see uh, you next week okay thank you sir okay uh sir uh, professor david say uh titip salam ke oh, dia pak febri sudah pergi he left early yeah karena ada kegiatan selanjutnya okay, okay. katanya uh, ada rapat okay uh i think let's prepare for next week guys and yeah uh, say thank you to pak febri dulu udah Hai. terima kasih atas sudah ini sharing ilmu langsung dari ini untuk eh, uh, alim uh, saya mau tanya bagaimana dengan uh, 